Let us pray. Dear Lord, we just want to come to you. We want to thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. But Lord, I ask for your Holy Spirit to fill this place right now. Lord, transform our hearts, our minds, and our lives so that we can be better disciples for you in this lost and dying world. Lord, we just ask right now that you show up in this place and guide us to where we need to be in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So all right, we're going to continue in Ephesians chapter 6. We started a series last week on the whole armor of God, and we're going to talk about what each piece is, how we get it, and how we use it, and put it on, and all these wonderful things. We talked about how to be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might, and we can only do that when we put on the whole armor of God. So that's where all this is leading. Last week we talked about the truth. We have to know what the truth is. We have to know who Jesus Christ is. We have to trust that he is the Son of God, that he is the one that came and paid the sacrifice for our sins. He willingly died on the cross. He was laid in the tomb, and on the third day he arose and he ascended into heaven. We have to believe, trust that Jesus Christ is who he says he is, that he is the Son of God. And it it is only by him that we can come to the Father. That is the truth. I was lost in my sin. I was destined for hell. But Jesus Christ stepped in and has forgiven me of my sins. And I trust in that. We have to know that truth before we can begin to put on the rest of the armor of God. So now that we have that belt of truth buckled on, it's time for us to, to move to the next piece. Starting in the 14th verse, it says, Stand therefore having girded your waist with truth. Having put on the breastplate of righteousness. So we're going to talk about that breastplate of righteousness. So what is this breastplate of righteousness? Why do I need it? What good is it? What does it do for me? And also, how do I put it on? Those are the questions that I want to answer today. So I want you to think about your life as we go through this. What what does this breastplate of righteousness mean to you? How important is it to you? Obviously we have a choice in whether we wear it or not because he tells us to put it on, right? If If it wasn't a choice, he'd say, hey, you got it on. Or, hey, you can't put it on. But he... We obviously have a choice in this, so he, he tells us to put it on. So sometimes we're not wearing it. But we need to be wearing it all the time because we know that we have an adversary. We know that we have an enemy. The devil, he's seeking whom he may devour. He's looking to attack you as you belong to Jesus Christ. He can't have your soul, but he can steal your joy and he can kill your witness. And we want to eliminate that. We want to be able to stand against the schemes of the devil, the fiery darts. We want to be able to stand, right? That's what it says, is stand. We need to stand in the power of the Lord. So go to Isaiah 64, 6. The first question we're going to answer is, where does it come from? Where does this righteousness that Paul is talking about, where does it come from? Well, first of all, I'm going to tell you where it doesn't come from. But we are all like an unclean thing and all our righteousness are like filthy rags. We all fade as a leaf and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. So first of all, we can see in scripture that the righteousness that I am to wear is not my own. Because if I wear my own righteousness, it says it's no good, it has no value, it will fade away and my sins will take me away. Where will it take me? It'll take me to death. It will take me to a place called hell. It will take me further away from God. See, my sin, before I came to Jesus Christ, had me separated from God. That's what sin does. It separates us. My righteousness, what I thought was good about me was no good. It still had me separated. It had carried me away. So we can see here in this verse that it's, Not my righteousness that I need to be wearing. 
You don't need to be wearing your righteousness. Go to Isaiah 61.10. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. Once I accepted the truth, once I believed the truth about Jesus Christ, he has given me something to wear. It says it's the garments of salvation, the clothes of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. Hey, I have joy in my heart because I am covered in the robe of righteousness of Jesus Christ. I hope that you can sit there this morning and, and have joy in your heart and be glad that Jesus Christ has given you a robe of righteousness. See, it's that breastplate of righteousness that he provides that we are to wear. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself with ornaments and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. Okay, that's great and wonderful. He has given me a robe of righteousness, but how did he give it to me? Go to 2 Corinthians 5.21. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us. He exchanged himself he exchanged his righteousness for my sins. That we might become the righteousness of God in him. He willingly paid his life, laid his life down on a cross as a perfect sacrifice for the atonement of my sins, for the evil that I had committed in my life. He says, I'm going to take that, but in exchange, I'm going to give you my righteousness. He said, I know that your righteousness is no good. He says, yours will not protect you. He says, so wear mine instead. But you got to put it on. And we're going to figure out how to do that in a moment. So it's not our righteousness that protects us. It's not our righteousness that we're to get up in the morning and put on. It is his righteousness. The righteousness that he provided on the cross of Calvary. Through the shedding of his blood. That is the righteousness that we are to put on. That he has covered us with. But you know a lot of times we take that covering off. So let's talk about why we need this breastplate of righteousness. What good is it? What value does it add to our life? Go to Proverbs 11.4. Riches do not profit in the day of wrath. When the battle is, is raging in your life, it doesn't matter how much money you have in the bank account. It doesn't matter what kind of assets you have all over the county. It doesn't matter what you own here in this world. When the battle is raging in your life, none of that has any value. You would give it all in a lot of instances if something would just go away. If something would quit happening in your life, you'd be like, hey, I'd give everything I got if this would just stop. Because it has no value at that point. It can't do anything for you. But righteousness delivers from death. Now we've done talked about whose righteousness that is. It's not mine. Mine's going to lead me to death. But the righteousness of Jesus Christ leads me to life. What is that righteousness? That righteousness is living right before God, doing things His way. And Jesus Christ, when He came, He lived a perfect life. He done everything perfect to God's will, to God's way. That's why the Bible says that He is the way, the truth, and the life because He did exactly what God commanded all the time. He never wavered. His righteousness delivers from death. So why do we need this righteousness? For our own protection, right? I need to be protected. I need to be protected from Satan. I need to be protected from death, from sin. His righteousness provides that protection. See, when we put on the breastplate of righteousness, it, it guards our hearts. It guards our internal organs. We fasten it down to that belt of truth so that it doesn't shake, it doesn't move, it doesn't wiggle around. It's, it protects us all the time. 
I need that protection. You need that protection. Without his righteousness covering us, we are open to all attacks. We can fall victim to even the simplest attack by Satan. But if we're wearing that righteousness, even the most calculated attack against you will not prevail. But we got to make sure that we have it on, right? We got to make sure Satan is our accuser. He stands before God and he says, hey, I know what Josh did last, last Monday and that's bad. It's bad. He's no good. And then Jesus will step in and say, he's covered by my righteousness. He's been forgiven. He has accepted the truth and he has put on this breastplate of righteousness that I have provided for him. And then all of a sudden that attack, it just, it's just a glancing blow that I never even feel. But how many of us actually feel the attacks of Satan? How many of us actually know that he's nipping at our heels? Maybe it's because we're not wearing that robe of righteousness, that breastplate of righteousness. We're feeling every attack that Satan throws our way. So let's, let's figure out this protection. Isaiah 32, 17. The work of righteousness will be peace. If, if righteousness is active in my life, I will be at peace. How many of us are at peace with God this morning? How many of us want peace with God this morning? Let, work, let righteousness work in you. Let God work in you. Let God lead you in His way. Follow that way. If you want peace with God, there has to be righteousness at work in your life. And the effect of righteousness is quietness and assurance forever. So when I put on this breastplate of righteousness, it says I can be at peace. My soul will be quiet and I will be assured of what? That he is my savior. That he will protect me. That no matter what comes up, I trust in him for my salvation. When I stand before God Almighty, I will plead Jesus Christ. When I have to give an account of my life at the end, I will say, I trust in your son Jesus Christ. He has forgiven me. It is by his blood that I have been forgiven. He is my righteousness. Everything that I have ever done outside of Jesus Christ was no good. But I understand that he has taken those things away and given me his righteousness in replace, in its place. But I, I feel like there's a lot of us that long for peace with God and long for a quietness and an assurance in our lives. And we don't have it. And we look for it, we search for it, and we say, God, where are you at? I believe in you. I trust in you. I know the truth about you. You are the Son of God. But I'm going through all these things and it's, my life is turmoil. It's just turned upside down. Satan is attacking on my left and my right, my front and my back, and I don't know where to turn or what to do. We can be in that shape as Christians because we don't have on that breastplate of righteousness. With that being said... Let's figure out how to put it on, right? That's the application of all this. If I stop right now, you would leave and say, well, that was good, but how do, how do I put it on? How do I get it? How can I step into it? So go to Psalms 1, 1 through 6. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. So we are put into position to receive favor from God when we do not walk by the plans of the ungodly people, okay? When we are not evil, when we do not do things against God, nor stand in the path of sinners, when we don't walk like the rest of the world, we're blessed. Nor sit 
in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. Is your delight found in the law of the Lord? Because that is the first step to putting on this breastplate of righteousness. If you do not find delight in following God's word, then you do not have the breastplate of righteousness on. You do not have the quietness, the peace, and the assurance that God promises through his righteousness if you find no delight, no joy in his word. And in his law, he meditates day and night. How many of us meditate on this day and night? Hey, I, I'm your pastor, and I, I fall short at that sometimes. I need to study more. I need to read more. I need to meditate more. And I believe as, as God works more in me, the more I want to know, and the more I want to know, the, the more I go to his word to find it. You know, I, he's still maturing me. He's still growing me. He's still maturing Mickey, and he's 183 years old. Whichever. But how many of us find a lot in, in God's law? Most of us look at it and we say, that's just a bunch of rules that he wants to give me so my life won't be any fun. That's the way a lot of us look at it. But that's not true. He gives us these laws for our benefit. For our benefit. Life is a lot better when I live according to this word. I may have fun for a moment. I may have fun for a season when I walk against his word, but it will not last. It will lead me to more turmoil in the end. But when I choose to live by his word, I find joy, true joy, everlasting joy, a sustaining joy that comes from only him. Next verse. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. That. How many of us want to be a tree that is firmly planted, that does not shake, it does not waver when storms and wind and rain come? Walk by his word. That brings forth its fruit in its season. It's working. It's doing things. It's producing. So righteousness, when we have it on, we're living by God's word it's, it produces fruit in our life. It leads us to activity, to doing things for him, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. You see, when we begin to wear this robe of righteousness, and it leads us to be active in our lives for the kingdom of God, for Christ, when we do that, he says, you'll be prosperous. It's not talking about out in the world and business. It's talking about in the economy of God's kingdom. That I would rather be prosperous there than here in this world. Next verse. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Are you being tossed around in a sea by every wave, by every wind that comes by? Are you running in a different direction Every time something comes up in your life, or are you running to God's Word? You see, when we choose a different way other than God's Word, we're double-minded. We'll not be able to see straight. We won't think straight. We'll run in the wrong direction every time. But when we go to His Word and we live by His Word, we can become that planted tree that stands through all kinds of turmoil. Through the attacks of the devil. Next verse. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Next verse. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous. Yeah, he knows the way of the righteous because he is the one that leads them. The righteous are the ones that follow him through his son, Jesus Christ. That's why he's the way. But the way of the ungodly shall perish. So if we choose not to wear this breastplate of righteousness, we open ourselves up for attack. Not only that, I'm going to go a step further, that if you do not put on this breastplate of righteousness, you don't believe in the belt of truth. You don't have the truth. You don't believe that God 
will pour out his wrath on you in the day of judgment and send you to a place called hell. You do not, you do not believe the truth because if you believed the truth, you would have no problem putting on the breastplate of righteousness. Better yet, you would be glad to do so. You would be willing to do so. You would be looking for it. You would be seeking for it. In Matthew 6, it tells us, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added. What things? The things that we need. The things that God knows that we need will be provided when we seek him, his kingdom, and his righteousness above all else. But how many of us truly are doing that in our lives? Go to Psalms 119, 172. And whoever's, I know Scott had to leave, so whoever's going. My tongue shall speak of your word. See, there's the action, you know, that the righteousness leads us into. You know, I told you that uh, if we are that tree that is firmly planted by the, by the waters, that it produces fruit, and that fruit is the activity in our life, the work in our life that we do in God, for God. Speaking of His Word is part of that. My tongue shall speak of your Word, for all your commandments are righteousness. All His commandments, all His Word are righteousness. When I choose to live by His Word, it is righteousness. So how, how do I put on, let's answer the question, how do I put on the breastplate of righteousness? Through obedience. Through obedience to God's Word. That's how I put on that robe of righteousness, that breastplate of righteousness. I have to have a faith that leads to obedience. Just to believe is not enough. I've got to have faith. Faith is belief that leads me into action, that leads me into obedience. That is the breastplate of righteousness. That's what protects me. It's Jesus Christ and the work that he did on the cross to save me from my sins. You see, I have to have a total dependence on Christ to truly live by his word, to have that indwelling of the Holy Spirit that lets me know when, hey, Josh, you took the armor off for a minute. You stepped off in the wrong direction. You need to put it back on. You need to come and, and ask for forgiveness, repent of your sins, and put that robe of righteousness back on, that breastplate, so that you will be covered. As y'all stand, you know, next week we're going to talk about having our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. See, that follows right after righteousness. When I have that robe of righteousness on and, and fruit is being produced in my life, I will have the, the feet of salvation on me and I will be willing to go out and spread it. But I want to ask you this morning, are you at turmoil in your life? Do you have turmoil in your life? Is Satan attacking you? Are you feeling the attacks of Satan? Do you feel like you are being drugged away from God? Well, let's, let's put on that breastplate of righteousness. Why, you say? Because Paul tells us in verse 10, he says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. You see, without the righteousness of Jesus Christ on me, I cannot be strong in the Lord. And I do not trust in the power of His might if I am not willing to live by His word through obedience. So as she stings, I, the, the altar is open. You come and pray for whatever it is you need to pray for. Come pray for yourself. Come pray for your family. Come just come pray. Just Hey, God wants to hear from you. You're his child. He sent his only begotten son so that you could have a relationship with him. He wants to hear from you. He wants to hear from his children. So as she, she sings, y'all come.